Hello and welcome to National Park Wild. I'm Eric, and as I work on my list of top 10 places that should be national parks, I thought I'd give you guys this video that was recommended by Albert Zhang, where I look at a list of national parks being ranked by somebody else and give some thoughts on it. So this is by Lee Abamanti. I believe he's been to every country in the world, so congratulations on that, Lee. Let's see your list. People will agree or disagree. Some will call a moron. Yeah, you definitely know how the internet works. So, I expect to disagree with quite a few, but given that I'm sure you enjoy most of the national parks, I can get behind pretty much any ranking. And it is fun to debate. So, I am always enjoying these kinds of lists, based on this experience. Alright, let's begin. So, Hot Springs at the very bottom. I would put it a little higher. I like it more than most people. So, he calls it boring, uninteresting, and don't understand why it's a park. Alright, so right away, cut into the chase, no nonsense. So it's clear that for the first few, he's going to have some flaws. Indiana Dunes is 62, that seems about right. It's definitely not really worthy of park status. And yeah, paying a fortune at tolls from Chicago, that seems about right. Pinnacles, okay, so I personally would put Pinnacles a lot higher. I liked it, not much to see. I get this, the scenery is not mind-blowing per se, but I love the hikes. And I liked a lot of the park. The wildlife seclusion is a great place for me. And the fact that they don't connect, I guess that is frustrating a little bit for the driver, but it is fun to walk from place to place in the units, and it's pretty cool, I think. Cuyahoga Valley is 60. So one thing, a lot of people would recognize the history of Cuyahoga Valley, and that's what makes it a great park for many. And yeah, there's a great waterfall, Brandywine Falls. So there's some other ones. I think Blue Hen and Buttermilk stand out. The Ledges. There's a little more to it than this. Though I would rank it right about where you put it. Congaree 59. I put it a little higher than that. Many don't enjoy it, but I think it's nice. I didn't have a whole lot of bugs there. It was quiet, and the trees were tall and impressive. And there's a lot of wildlife. And it was a very enjoyable place. Boardwalk is a must-do hike. I put it a little higher. Now, Gateway Arch at 58 is probably the first besides Pinnacles, but for most of you watching, the first surprising one, because I would have expected Gateway Arch to be 63, maybe 62, but it's here. I guess the arch is cool to see, but outside of that in the museum, there, was, there wasn't any nature really to enjoy. It's landscaped, and it's a national park that's very city park-like, and I just don't think it should have national park status. Now Mammoth Cave being this low is a bit surprising. I think some people overblow Mammoth Cave just because of its record as longest cave in the world. And it does have great features such as Frozen Niagara, and I did enjoy my cave tours. And I like the above ground scenery as well, but I don't think it should rank too much higher than where this is. It'd be in the 40s, closer to 40 than 50, but I don't think it's really that great compared to some of the others. Now Biscayne at 56. That's interesting. So I see he says he's a visual person as opposed to getting into scientific things. So there are some people who go to national parks because they enjoy learning about the history of it, of the geology, and the people who have lived in the area before. And then there are those who enjoy just photographing the scenery, enjoying the hikes, living in the moments. I lean toward the latter, and it seems Lee does as well. So I can definitely see where that will be a big factor in some of these rankings. So for a lot of people who enjoy the history aspects, that is why Gateway Arch, Cuyahoga Valley, and a few others were much lower. Voyager is at 55. I think I put that a bit higher, though I did do the houseboat, and people do recommend the houseboat to him, he says. Now, I did not drink any beers when I was there, personally, because I do not, you know, I'm not 21. But yeah, I didn't drink beers, and I think I put it a little higher. I guess it's not super exciting, but I enjoyed bald eagles, and there was some very nice scenery on the water. So Wind Cave, another where he enjoys caves and wasn't overly impressed. I think Wind Cave has the least impressive of the caves in the U.S. national parks, but I also do kind of feel it has a great sense of history that actually stood out during the cave tour. And he mentions the wildlife, but it was raining, so we didn't see a whole lot. When I went, there were quite a few prairie dogs, and then there was a good herd of bison. Though I do think a lot of other areas in Black Hills are worth visiting just as much, if not more, than Wind Cave. I would highly recommend going to Devil's Tower if you're in the area. 
it is absolutely worth the extra driving. Guadalupe Mountains, relatively indistinguishable from other parks. That's interesting. I think it had very unique mountain scenery. Maybe it wasn't mountain scenery that I thought was as awe-inspiring as quite a few others, but I would put it around this place, but I still don't think it's indistinguishable. Now, American Samoa is the one I've not been to, so this is interesting. I'm going to kind of skip by this one. Shenandoah. Now, I don't remember that building in Shenandoah. Okay, it's Monticello. So, Monticello is nearby, and it was his first national park when he was young. Yeah, I don't know if I ever went to one when I was really young, but my first, I think, was Grand Canyon at age 9. That was pretty long time ago. It was a nice drive. Yes, Skyline Drive is beautiful. Poor Man's Smoky Mountains. Guess we'll get to Smoky Mountains later then. Sequoia at 50. That's surprising to me. I have that closer to 20. So the trees, I personally think the trees, while nice, I don't think they're really the main draw of the park for me personally. I love the mountain scenery. The Sierra Nevadas are beautiful. General's Highway is one of my favorite scenic drives for being able to see the mountains. And the hiking here is top notch. I put it much higher for that. But I guess if you saw a lot of the trees, it would not stand out quite as much. Now I'm saying it's like seeing yet another elephant on a safari. That's something that stands out to me. Because I never get tired of seeing scenery over and over again, or wildlife, like if I see a bison, then another, then another. It just never gets old for me, and I'll still take another photo or video. Petrified Forest at 49? Okay. I put it a lot higher, personally, because I thought the scenery was more impressive. So, see if it's still an accurate statement in the future. Maybe he will, we'll see. Just make sure you don't go late, because the park closes very early, though. Now, the newest park, New River Gorge at 48. I think some would put it much higher, but I don't know. I think it's definitely worthy of park status, and he agrees with that. And it's one of the best national parks of recent memory. And yeah, the fact that the bridge is the main site is a little weird. Alright, Saguaro, the other lesser Arizona park, I think is a pretty good one. I put it much higher because I saw a lot of wildlife, such as great horned owls. And I guess if you get old like, and tired of the cacti at a certain point... Yeah, it's not that impressive in terms of mountain scenery either, but I thought the abundance of cacti never got old for me. Virgin Islands at 46. I'm not a huge beach guy, but I would put it much higher than this. So distaste for the Virgin Islands based on multiple bad experiences, okay. Still loves the way they look, he says, but bad experience, I can get behind that. Similar to another park that I had a less than desirable experience in that did kind of hold it back. Isle Royal at 45. There are some backpackers who put it a lot higher. I've done some hiking in Isle Royal pretty deep into the island. And I think the best scenery there is still along the coast, like Stoll Trail. Definitely beautiful. And I'm glad he enjoyed it. Special place for him because it was the last when he was visiting them. But I guess, yeah, it doesn't stand out in scenery the same way a lot of others do. Everglades at 44. This is my home park. I'm not too far from Everglades at all. So it is kind of close to home for me in terms of scenery and wildlife. If it were prettier, he'd rank it higher. I pretty much agree with that. Spot on. Mesa Verde at 43. I put it around there as well, I would say. I love Mesa Verde. I think, yeah, I guess it's not as dramatic in terms of scenery as others. But it's really not because it's bad. It's just because others are better. White Sands, torn on where to rank it is what it is, so kind of the same complaint he had for Redwood, uh, sorry, Sequoia and Saguaro, where it's at a certain point, it's just white sand. I can't picture myself getting tired of that, but I get it. Kenai Fjords, this is a bit lower than I expected. All the Alaska parks are beautiful though, so I can get behind it. And least favorite of the eight Alaska parks, there's a lot of great parks out there. It's like being a movie franchise where you think all of them are great and then your least favorite film being one that you still think is awesome, like if you like all the Toy Story films and Toy Story is your least favorite of them, but you still think it's great, just not as good as 2, 3, and 4. Maybe a weird comparison for those who don't watch Toy Story. I liked those films as a kid though. Great Smoky Mountains at 40. This is surprising to me. I thought I was the only person who would put it anywhere near here. For me, Great Smoky Mountains is one where the scenery is nice but doesn't warrant a spot in the top half. And there were things during my experience that did somewhat sour it, though it's been quite a long time. So I can't speak to it now. But 
yeah, I can't hold a candle to the parks in the West, and I also agree that Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge do somewhat take away from this park. I get that there are some great parks that have tourist towns in them, but these seem integrated into the park a little more. Hawaii volcanoes being this low is a little surprising. You got to see lava? I did not see lava. I still put it much higher, but I am somewhat a huge fan of the geothermal activity type things. He says it's better to do a helicopter tour. Yeah, I guess that would be pretty awesome. Redwood being at 38. There are some who love Redwood. I don't quite get where it would rank super high because for me, forests and beaches are not quite mountain and desert. But it is a great park and I'm glad he enjoys the drive. I would agree with many of the things he's saying here. Kings Canyon. I gotta get back there. Snowed in when I went. And if you're choosing between this and Sequoia, he says go to Kings Canyon more. Yeah, it does seem to have more of the hiking type thing, but both parks seem like great combo of places to go for backpacking and hiking. Beautiful places for sure. Joshua Tree. This being higher than like five other California parks is shocking to me. I just don't see where it's as dramatic as he was saying earlier. It's much smaller scale rock formations. Still great, but... While this is a round where I'd rank it, I would have thought places such as maybe Redwood and Sequoia would be a lot higher than Joshua Tree. Great Basin. Didn't love it when he went. That's a shame. I love Great Basin when I went. Yeah, he did the cave tour. I was not able to do it due to when I went, but it was a great park. The hiking in the mountains, such as this picture here, definitely very good. Great Sand Dunes. Having a few great parks in a row, quite literally. Getting there early is definitely a great piece of advice, and I'm happy to see Great Sand Dunes ranked pretty decently. I would definitely put it right around here, and it is an underrated park. Now Lassen Volcanic. I would put Lassen closer to the top 20, probably in the top 20. But wow, that's a beautiful photo. I would have loved to go when you have the snow on the lake like that. That's stunning. And it is probably the most unknown, except maybe Pinnacles, of the California parks. Beautiful place. And it's a quiet one, Lassen Peak, which is pictured here, one of my favorite hikes. Definitely a great park, and I'm really happy that it ranked pretty high on this list. Even though it's still not top half, but there's a lot of great parks to rank. Haleakala, definitely a great one. I would say it would rank higher for me, in the 25 range or so. I guess it's not by a huge gap. Quintessential Maui experience, I'd agree. Now Maui being his favorite island in Hawaii, I would always go with Kauai personally, but that's just me. Lake Clark at 31. A bit of a surprise for me. I don't know how many of you have been to Lake Clark, but for me, who has been there, it's top five. I thought the mountains were grand and stunning. You have excellent hikes, and you have a lot of good wildlife. Wolves and bears stand out. He even says this is the place to see bears in Alaska. Huh, what about Katmai? I don't know. We'll get to Katmai later, I'm sure. But I would have thought Lake Clark would rank higher based on he seems to love mountains and he seemed to enjoy the bears. Black Canyon, I would say that ranks around here for me as well. Definitely surprised at how impressive it was. Quite a canyon. I would say it is a Grand Canyon. It is not the Grand Canyon, but it's excellent. I saw quite a bit of wildlife here, and it does have a cool name. I gotta agree with him on that. Alright, Channel Island's coming in with a good ranking. 29, I think a lot of people put this in the bottom 10. I think that's probably just because it's so difficult to get to and it's not very high up there in terms of facilities, but a lack of facilities means nothing for me in a park. I think the dolphins going in and out of the water as you're just boating along is great, and he mentioned that. Hikes and scenery are excellent, and it is a very secluded one. And that's a wonderful photo we got. Now Glacier Bay, I gotta get back there. He's saying the glacial activity here is better than all except Patagonia. That is such a wonderful thing to see, the calving of glaciers. I've seen Hubbard Glacier before. I'd love to go back to Glacier Bay. Now, I wasn't expecting Badlands to be this high. It does have good hiking, so I'm happy that he recognized that. And yeah, it is not far from Rapid City and Black Hills. You can go to Mount Rushmore, Crazy Horse. There is a lot to see in the Black Hills area. I mentioned Devil's Tower. There's a lot of great stuff to see. North Cascades, I gotta get back there. 
He remembers it for having to sleep in his car. That's a pretty fun story. And this is a beautiful image, so I definitely need to go back to the North Cascades. Theodore Roosevelt coming in with 25. Yes, okay, so I'm very happy to see Theodore Roosevelt get a pretty good ranking. I have it quite close to top 10. That's just me, though. I have it a lot higher than most. Great wildlife, definitely like him mentioning that. Unique looking badlands. The loop road is definitely excellent. I love everything about this. I didn't get quite a sky like that one. That is wonderful, though. And I'm very happy to see that you enjoyed this National Park, Lee. Acadia. Acadia, I would rank right around 22, 23, I think, so 24 is very close for me. I didn't bring a dog, I don't have a dog, but there is a lot of excellent scenery. And saying go by land, sea, and sky, yeah, there's a lot of great perspectives I get from this park. It looks like this image is from Cadillac Mountain, I guess. Yeah, that's Cadillac Mountain. Now, Capitol Reef. I think that's the first Utah park. Yeah, the first Utah park he mentioned. And I would say it is my least favorite of them, but it's also the one I've seen the least of by far. So, the fact that that's number 23 speaks to how great the Utah parks are. And the general store, yep, definitely a great place to stop at. Kobuk Valley being number 22. I'm surprised that beat out Lake Clark. I thought it didn't really have the mountain scenery of the other Alaska parks, and while I enjoyed the sand dunes, it wasn't quite as breathtaking as the rest of Alaska for me. But I am happy that you had a great experience with that one. Brooks Range Aviation is wonderful. Rocky Mountain. Rocky Mountain being number 21, I think that'll satisfy many. It's a great mountain park, but it's not a best of the best mountain park for a lot of people, and it's not quite for me. I put it around here a bit higher than 21, I'd say, but very happy that it got a good score. And yeah, the weather is definitely something that can be very difficult to enjoy. Because sometimes it snows like crazy. Okay, Mount Rainier in top 20. That's very good. Now, I'm impressed that you got such a clear day at Mount Rainier. It was not quite like that on some of the days I went. The best times I've seen Mount Rainier were outside of the actual park. But it is a beautiful mountain, as you said. Alright, now we're talking. Carlsbad Caverns. I don't have it quite as high as this. But this is easily the best cave park in the U.S., and I'm surprised how few people agree with that, but I'm happy that there is at least one other person. I thought Carlsbad were just some of the best caves I'd seen. Massive rooms, stalactites, stalagmites, you get to walk on your own. It easily beats Wind Cave and Mammoth Cave for me. I do want to know, for those who love Mammoth Cave and Wind Cave, what makes those better than Carlsbad Caverns for you? I do actually want to know that. Grand Teton at 18 is pretty good. I would put it higher personally, but not by a huge margin. And Jackson Hole is definitely a nice place. And Olympic being 17, we're getting to the really great parks now. Some of the best of the best. I loved Olympic when I went. Diverse, yeah, from beach to rainforest, but also the mountains, because I think Hurricane Ridge is my favorite area of the park. Okay, Death Valley. Death Valley ranks pretty close to here for me. And I loved it. Definitely bring water. And it is more than just Badwater Basin. Do Zabriskie Point when you go. That's in this image here. That's a beautiful area. Big Bend at 15. Okay, now this is one of my favorite rankings so far because Big Bend is one of my favorite national parks and actually my favorite desert national park. So what's he mentioned about it? Takes ever, but it's worth it. Yes, definitely. Straddles the border. That's a very unique setting. Great views and hikes. Massive park. Hike Balance Rock. I would love to do Balance Rock. It was not an option when I went, so I had to do Lost Mine instead. But Lost Mine is so wonderful that I don't even mind. Katmai. At number 14. I have Katmai in the top 5, so it's pretty high up, and I'm very happy that it's high up on this list. He mentions the bears. Not a lot of mention of the mountains. I think the Valley of 10,000 Smokes is a absolutely fantastic mountain area and has some of the most unique colors and scale of any Alaska National Park or any national park out there. So I'd put it a lot higher for the mountain scenery combined with the bears. Bryce Canyon. So this used to be in his top 10, apparently, and I would still put it around 13 for sure. It's pretty close to there for me. So I'm very happy to see he enjoys Bryce Canyon. Aw oh man, Yellowstone at 12. I can respect this for sure. For me, Yellowstone is number one. That's partially sentimental value, but I do think there's just so much to see and enjoy that my visits to Yellowstone are always my favorites. And he mentions the over-tourism. 
Yes, last year was a very, very crowded year for Yellowstone, but 2020 was not, and I hear that they're doing better now. Granted, things have changed quite a bit due to the unfortunate flooding and rock slides that happened in Yellowstone fairly recently. So, I wonder what it's like now, crowd-wise. Glacier, okay, we're knocking out my top three so far. We got my number one right here, my number three right here. Glacier is definitely a gem. And, wow, that's just an excellent photo of... I think that's probably Avalanche Creek. It is a beautiful area. Okay, Denali at number ten. So, that's my number two, so... My entire top three has been in these, this range, and I'm very happy they ranked highly. It's interesting to see them all right next to each other, but not in the top three. Could have easily been number one on the list. Yeah, that seems about right. I put pretty much any of my top 30 in my number one if I could. They're all that wonderful. And the mountain itself, just in that photo, you can see it's massive. It's definitely my favorite mountain and favorite site in any national park. Now, Dry Tortugas at number nine. That's a very interesting pick. I have not put it that high. I know America's Parks, Randy Smith, he's excellent YouTuber. He put that at number one, his favorite. So I guess there is a special feeling that this one gives. Maybe it's about this a secluded island that almost feels like a private island when you're on it. The history is great. He mentions taking it by plane. Yes, I agree. I think the flight is probably one of my favorite parts of the park. The snorkeling is great. It is an excellent park, though I don't put it quite that high. Gates of the Arctic, does that make this the highest Alaska park on the list? I don't know. I think that... I guess he didn't mention Wrangell St. Elias yet, but Brooks Range is beautiful. I didn't think it was quite as grand in scale as he's implying. I didn't think it was as impressive as Lake Clark or Katmai, so I wouldn't put it above those, but I would put it in a decent spot on the list. Zion, alright, Zion getting the respect it deserves. Now, Zion has become crowded, I've definitely seen that, but I think there are great hikes that you can do without having to worry about that much, and I'm very happy to see it get a top 10 spot. I think it's number 7 or 8 for me, so that's excellent. And Angel's Landing is one of my favorite hikes. Now, Grand Canyon, first national park. That's interesting because it was actually my first as well, despite the fact that I don't live anywhere near it. But it definitely, alright, it sounds cliche to say it's beautiful, but yeah, it earned those cliches. It really does speak for itself. It is just as magnificent as everyone says. Crater Lake at number 5, a bit surprising. But I did definitely marvel at it when I first saw it. It's grand in scale, reflective, clear water, pure blue. And I'm surprised he says it's better than the Grand Canyon as a wonder of nature, but I am very happy about that. So it's not higher because it's just the lake and the rest is just trees. I don't know, there are some mountains and some waterfalls and a little more to it in the lake. But I would agree the lake is the best part and it is a breathtaking national park. Okay, Wrangell St. Elias, I guess that would be the highest ranked of the Alaska parks. I don't put it quite that high. I did Root Glacier, yeah, so I'm very happy that he enjoyed that one. The weather was not nearly as good as this. I didn't think it was quite there with Lake Clark and Katmai, but I do still think it is a great national park, and a solid number four for the Alaska parks. As I mentioned, Denali being the other in the three that's better. Archers at number three. So many would say this is one of the very best. I don't have it quite that high. I thought a lot of the scenery was smaller scale, so it wasn't quite as impressive as, say, Zion or Big Bend. But I do understand why some rank it very highly. Now, I'm surprised it has such a big fan base that when I put it in the 20 range, people get upset with me. But it's a great park. And Delicate Arch is the most impressive site, and this picture definitely just says it all. It earned a very high spot in the list, and I'm very fine with it being number three. Now, Canyonlands one spot above Arches is funny because I would do the same thing. One spot above for me. Now, a modern day Grand Canyon is an interesting way to go about it. It looks very different from the Grand Canyon. He mentions going to the Needles, and I highly agree because the Needles is far more impressive than Island of the Sky for me, better for hikers, and better for average sightseers. It is definitely a great national park I'd put in probably the 18 range. And number one's Yosemite. Okay, yeah, I know we hadn't mentioned Yosemite, so I figured that was going to be number one, and I can't disagree with that. I mean, it's not my number one, but how can one be upset with Yosemite being your number one spot? Maybe it's a cliche for that to be number one, but I think it earned that cliche just as much as Grand Canyon. And that was that entire list. 
So, if Lee Abamonsi is watching this, I will say, this list is very well done. Short descriptions for most of the parks, and I like that it got a little longer as you got to your favorites, so you got to say more about them. I enjoy that style. The list was fairly agreeable for me. There were some large gaps where I enjoy some more than you, such as Pinnacles and Lake Clark. And I maybe wouldn't have had ones like Rangel St. Elias and Archers and Canyonlands in my top 10. But I'm very happy you enjoyed the majority of the national parks, and I enjoyed reading through this blog overall. So thank you for watching everyone. Comment down below your thoughts, your list of national parks, and what you thought about this one. And if there's any other lists you want me to react to, let me know and I'll do more of these. Subscribe for more National Park content. I'll see you next time.